Okay, folks, it's turn 13. We find ourselves in an interesting position. So no battles this turn. We did lose a crippled unit, which is unfortunate, but uh, not, a, not a serious problem. Didn't find any magic sites. This is very interesting. This battle in Hall Woods. This was Patala attacking uh, the independents holding this province here, Hall Woods, as I said. Now, here's the thing. This Patalan army is actually extremely weak. Um, they've got these crossbowmen, independent crossbowmen, basically. They've got a bunch of Marcata archers, which are very bad units. And then they've got these Bandar warriors. Bandar warriors are okay units, but they're not great. Uh, certainly not by late age standards. In the middle age, uh, these units would be, uh, I would say, decently solid. They hit hard. They have decent prot. Um, their attack and defense skills are not exceptional. Uh, which is kind of their biggest downfall, I would say. But they do have bucklers, so they have a little bit of protection against arrows and crossbow bolts, and they do have decent prot. Um, but the thing is, this army of light infantry with javelins and heavy infantry actually beats them, because Bandar Warriors, their biggest downfall is their size 3, and they only have one attack each. And despite being high damage, a bludgeoning attack is not super impressive in the late age. For example, look at these heavy infantry. They have Prot 16 and a shield, which has Prot 16 for pairing. So Prot 16 already mitigates the majority of that damage, that 21 damage, and they're not piercing weapons, so they don't reduce armor. The light infantry here, by contrast, have 13 damage piercing spears, um, so they can do chip damage to Bandar warriors, and they're fighting them three on two at worst. Normally, especially like here at this angle, it was actually 2 on 9, uh, I believe it's actually 2 against 12. So, you see how that ends up very badly for the Bandar Warriors. They don't quite have the stats necessary to actually reduce enemy numbers quickly enough to succeed, um, which is what good size 3 giant infantry relies on. So, the Bandar just get absolutely chewed up, they rout. The Marcata end up in melee, and Marcata do very badly in melee. Uh, Marcata do have decent defense scores. Their base defense skill is 14, and so mixed in with Bandar, they can serve as effective chaff. But in this case, they were not mixed in with the Bandar. They were simply archers by themselves. So the enemy flees, their crossbowmen get caught and slaughtered as they try to run. And the end result is, that battle in Hall Woods cost Patala 30 of their own units, including a commander... Um, and, I mean, just a whole bunch of resources. Bandar Warriors are not cheap. Um, for only 8 of the 40-some defenders. So, the Independents have actually only been attrited by a fraction, while Patala lost almost their entire expansion force. So, as a result, what I find with here is... Now, he's got his... I think his god has just woken up. Um, he's got a man-eater, who I believe... Patala's god is a... is, as you see, a man-eater. Um, so he has a decent awake expander now because man eaters are decent awake expanders. Death and blood, um, they're solid. They're they're kind of like Myrmicolions, but with blood magic. Um, that said, his expansion so far has been extremely poor, and he's now being pressed by man, who is right next to his this citadel that he's built. He has built a citadel, which is you know nice for him. Like that's that's a good call. But I don't think he has a whole lot of provinces. I just I just don't think Patala has a lot of provinces going for them. So. I think Patala's in trouble. Atlantis, doing quite well. Um, Utgard, I think, are a little bit back on an even keel. They still have a number of independent provinces that, in their place, I would have really, really tried to snap up. But hey, I, I get it, you know, like, it's hard to snap up all those indie provinces. I would love to have this one, but I don't think I'm going to have the time to get to it. Um, so, but what this basically means is, I'm quite confident that I don't have to worry about Patala attacking me. Um, and I'll continue to engage with them and, uh, and try to convince them and, and try to make sure that they're not going to attack me. But I'm pretty confident at the moment that I don't have to worry about that too much because they're, they're going to be focused on taking these provinces. I think I can make peace with them while I attack Erythia. Uh, Erythia has also lost, of course, their clash with me last turn. They don't have a whole lot of troops left. Um... They've got some Theophorites here and here. They are recruiting Soldiers of the Setting Sun, which are their sacreds. Now, Soldiers of the Setting Sun are not super impressive, but they have Sun Awe. So they do have Awe in, uh, in, in Battles on Land, which is a nice little defensive layer for them. They also have quite high Prot. 
Um, their encumbrance is, is likewise quite high, and they're slow to recruit. Well, especially, I mean, they're sacred. So that's the biggest limiter, limiter on them. But they're decent, but they're not great. And if I recall correctly, Erythia's Bless is not impressive. I'm gonna... You're gonna be looking at that for a second while I pull up the list of gods again. I'm not gonna be able to show it to you in the middle of the video here, unfortunately. But I'm gonna check what Erythia's God is and... See, because I, if I recall correctly, they don't have any kind of really impressive bless for those guys. Right, so their god is uh, a serpent of the underworld, or a, a serpent of snake, serpent of chaos, I think it's called. Anyway, it's a snake with death five. It's imprisoned, um, and yeah, his blesses are undead command and withering weapons. So not super impressive, combat wise. Um, and the God of Patala, yeah, the God of Patala does have Fire Shock Resistance as a Bless, so it's Earth 5. So it's a, a fairly impressive Awake Expander. Now, I could still kill that with Manlea Drugina if I expend enough, but it would be expensive. Uh, Maneaters are pretty powerful, pretty powerful expanding monsters. So, in any case, um, so I'm not scared of, uh, of Arithia's God, like, at all. Um, it's not a very powerful combatant, to be honest. I mean, it's a monster, and it would do damage. It would, like, take... It would take significant, you know... Significant pressure to kill. But it's not a super powerful monster. And it doesn't have a bless that will make his sacreds good. In addition, of course, it won't be up until sometime in the 30s. Um, you know, between... Sometime between turn 30 and turn 42 is when that thing will wake up. So I don't think I have to worry about it. I think I could probably pretty much knock Arithia out of the game before it arrives. Yes, as Bogoru. So, what we're doing is, we're moving in on Annika. I know that Annika does not have an impressive military force, so I've got forces converging on it. I have Rincewind, I have 17 cavalry plus 9 archers. I'm quite confident that we will be able to take Annika. I'm not recruiting any units this turn, because I'm building a palisade in Wicker Woods. Um, which, to be fair, might be precipitous. Uh, Timing-wise, it might be more useful to continue rolling out the heavy cavalry right now. But I think I've got 11 units here. Well, actually, I'll tell you what. You know what I'm going to do? I'm actually going to cancel this mage. I'm going to cancel a couple of mages in order to get full recruitment out of the capital. Because I've got a commander moving to the capital. So that will give him a much larger group of troops to take with him. I've also got Pafnuti and Sverdislav. So, I think losing, not having the mages isn't as important right now as having more troops. In terms of research, my research is pretty solid. Um, if I could hit Conjuration level 5 to get full-sized air elementals, that would be fantastic. Small air, air elementals, however, will still help, and I do have some air gems to burn. So, the next step here, I think, is going to be deploying an Astropelagist Communion. Uh, in in the name of getting this done as quickly as possible. Now I have access to some fire and earth magic as well. I don't have the good earth magic. The good earth magic is earth meld here that will help me because earth meld is incredibly effective against basically human infantry and it sets defense to zero. So you can't dodge. When you have heavy cavalry like this, that's especially useful because it means that your first lance charge will hit earth melded troops and the lance charge does monstrous damage because the charge bonus is, uh, yeah, half the strength, so it's an extra, I forget how it rounds, but it's either 5 or 6 extra damage, which means you're hitting for, you know, like 24 piercing damage, or 25 piercing damage, with the lance charge. Now wait, this should be a heavy lance. Oh yeah, yeah, that's right, this is actually a heavy lance, so, uh, it's actually the full strength bonus, so you're dealing, like, fucking 30 piercing damage when you hit with the lance charge from the Malia Drugina. So, if you can earth meld somebody and hit them with that, then it's going to kill them. Which is pretty useful. Um, however, both of these guys are busy summoning Firebirds, which they're going to start doing right now. Um, I may move them out next turn. I don't really have any earth gem income, but yeah, if, if I can throw them in a small communion, they can spam earth meld pretty effectively. But what I am going to do is I'm going to take these six, I think. And I know that will crush my research speed. But I feel like right now I've got Lightning Bolt, which is a, a useful basic combat spell. 
and I've got Summon Lesser Air Elemental, which is once again a useful basic combat spell. It's not as useful against Arithia because Soldiers of the Setting Sun have magic weapons, but if I can jump them into the back lines, they can still derange and kill mages. So, I'm, hmm, I won't send six, I'll send four. Because the goal here is definitely going to be to kind of take this take this war quickly, but with minimal uh, minimal commitment, if that makes sense. Like I, I still want to be doing research. I still want to be doing all the other things that I want to do that I have to do in my empire to keep it going. I, I just want to also not have to stop as I'm taking Arithian territory. So these four are going to move up there. Um, actually, I'll tell you what. I have 48 gold. I'm going to recruit an independent commander over there, because I, I have a lot of cavalry, because Rincewind is moving out without them. So these four are going to go over... Uh, what's faster? My basic battle plan here is Capsierco is hopping over here. I don't think he'll move to intercept me with his Soldiers of the Setting Sun. If he advances, I think I'm gambling that he's going to move them here, in a direct line towards me. So Capsierco will take that province. Um, that will leave me in an interesting position where Capsierco and five Maleadrugina... Well, actually, you know what? These Maleadrugina are fairly beat up. What I don't want to do is lose Capsierco, because Capsierco is a very, very powerful unit. Um, he has map move 22, but swamps cost 14. So, ugh. I'm a little bit torn. And I kind of want to play safe with Capsierco because he's great. Um, there's a few different things I can do at this point. Where, as I said, I'm moving Rincewind up here to take this throne to open up kind of another front. I've also got all these, all these cavalry that will be coming from here and here and moving straight north. So like I said, we've got 17 units over here, the majority of which are Malea Drugina. Um, We're getting four more cavalry plus the archers out here. So I've got another, you know, 20 some odd units that this commander, Obarak, will be leading northward. Um, I've also got uh, these guys, so four more Malaya Drugina, Agrid Drugina, and then several Black Hoods, who aren't terribly useful in melee, but can flank very quickly and have composite bows. That Pafanuti is leading forward. So these guys are here to safeguard the Palisade that I'm starting to build in case these Theophorites attack me. These Thyrophorites, I guess, is the pronunciation there. Um, taking this province is actually relatively low value because it's a swamp, but I just want to, you know, take something away from Erythia. Um, as I said, I'm betting that his soldiers of the setting sun, assuming he has enough to make a difference, which I don't know that he does, if they move, they're going to move here. That's my bet. They actually can't move over here, but this province does have the majority of his remaining Thyrophorites, Theriophorites, however you pronounce that word. His light infantry, his militia, essentially. Um, and I'm not certain that my five plus Capsirco can take that many plus whatever province defense he has in this province. So I'm hesitant to attack that province. I'm hesitant to attack this province because that's where I think he's going to move. Attacking this province would potentially get it for me, but what I'm concerned about is if I move to attack that province and he moves down here, he could then cut me off. Uh, which would be very problematic. So I think... Woof. I think Capsirco staying here is actually the best thing I can do. And I'll tell you what. I'm going to chop out those archers real quick to get myself some extra gold. And recruit. I get two black hoods. Or I could get a Stiag and a black hood. Or I could get some lizard warriors. Four Lizard Warriors. Four Lizard Warriors will add more killing power, but they won't add speed and charge. So we're going to get a Stiag, which will actually also give me the standard effect. And then we'll get... <clears throat> yeah, one Black Hood. Okay, so we'll reinforce a little bit there. With Capsirco. And then he'll be able to take those units, add those to his squadron, and as my troops con conglomerate up there, I'll be able to advance either through Berman Highs or, or combine into Yellow Caves. Now, Yellow Caves, of course, is dark, so everyone's stats are penalized there, and 
If I manage to fight his soldiers of the setting sun in there, their awe won't come into effect because it's sun awe. It doesn't apply in darkness. Um, being in the dark actually does help my troops. Because my Maleadrugina, even with the penalties, have fairly high defense values. Now that is a consideration. But I don't know what the province defense is. My fear is that he's dropped a province defense trap here. And if he's got like 20 or 30 points of province defense in this province, they would actually kill my Maleadrugina if they are, depending on what indie pop type they are, if they're cavemen, they would absolutely murder me. If it's Zots, probably not. I just, it just feels risky. I mean, I want to do it because I want to maintain the momentum, but it just feels risky. Um, and next turn, I can have these forces plus these guys plus, you know, these forces, which shouldn't take a whole lot of casualties. I can have all of them uh, assemble on yellow caves and then split up as necessary to take other parts of Erythian territory, which I think is probably the best strategy overall. Um, I think that's probably the way we want to do that. Now, do you have any better spells you can cast? Personal luck. Twist fate skeletal body. Yeah, drop a personal luck on yourself. I mean, it won't make much difference to you because your HP is really high, but every little bit helps. Okay. Yeah, that's going to be the plan. Alright, so Capsirco is just going to chill out for one more turn. We're building that palisade. We're, we're cutting out most of our mage recruitment in favor of troops. Over here, I've got 16 more gold. So while we're waiting on somebody to come pick them up, we're going to recruit two more boy archers, I guess. Or actually, with 16 gold... Uh... I should see city guard versus heavy infantry. Uh, I guess I'll recruit a city guard. Heavy infantry are slightly faster and have higher prot but lower defense skill. And I feel like not being hit is usually a better defense than having two extra points of prot. So we'll go ahead with a Pesh CCD group. Well, ah, it's a hard call. These guys have javelins, but they suck. These guys are very mediocre. Yeah, we'll get one of them. Okay. Oh yeah, I actually don't need a commander because I have Yakim coming up. I planned that last turn. Ha! Huh, I'm smarter than I remember. So, then, with that extra money, I can recruit, actually, either two Greed or one Malaya and a Peshtzi. Okay, that should be fine. I could squeeze out a few more troops if I canceled this Astropelagist, but I do want to keep a little bit of Mage recruitment as well. Alright, that's the combat plan. So, we're going to bank on not being attacked by Patala, basically. Now, Patala has actually hired Gufri's Swordsman. So they have those guys for three turns, but their income can't be super high. Um, so, like, they just can't support much of an army at the moment. And those mercenaries cost them... I forget what those mercenaries cost them. Is there a way I can see what they charge? No. Barelk City Guard costs 140. Fordo Bogget costs 40. Fordo Bogget actually is a pretty good one. Um, and they are being employed by Erythia. So, that's interesting. I wonder where they are. They almost have to be over here, don't they? Unless they're there. Unless they're there, they're either there or over here. So you know what I hope? I hope Fordo Bogget moves in here kills these guys off, and then gets racked by my cavalry. That would be really nice. Oh, that's another... That's a question. Okay, yeah, we're just gonna... We're, we're gonna let it be what it is. We're gonna see how this goes. I think... 
And this is always, it's always dangerous for me to say this, but I think I can roll Patala. I'm, I'm sorry, Arithia. I mean, I think I could roll Patala too if I was set up to do it, but I'm set up to attack Arithia, so I think I can take him. In any case, thanks for watching. I'll see y'all in turn 14. We'll find out what happens. Okay, folks, turn 14. An interesting turn. A very interesting turn indeed. Not an unalloyedly positive turn. But in any case, so we attacked Anika, and unfortunately we got there first. Um, our cavalry was... Most of our units were faster than the Erythian units, so I did kind of anticipate that we would get here first, but still, it's a little bit sad. In any case, as I saw, it's mostly militia and light cav. There are few heavy cavalry. A couple of their lances get wasted on my puppos, and then my cavalry charge into their militia. The militia rout as the commanders are killed by Rincewind jumping into the back and the Malaya Drugina, and we just wipe them out. No trouble. Okay, then Erythia attacks me in Annika. So, this is where Erythia's mercenaries are. So he's got 40 Burgmeister Guard. Burgmeister Guard are deceptively dangerous. Um, you've seen these guys in my in my game, where they've been sort of just serving as chaff in Dominion's All-Stars, but they are deceptively dangerous because they're six per square, so they get a lot of attack density, and their attacks are piercing half the time. So on any given round, you're likely to be taking three piercing 11 damage attacks, which aren't super dangerous, but do add up. Uh, and the harass penalty from them adds up very, very quickly in particular. They've got uh, their King of Both Worlds over here, same guy, and their line of Theophorites, They've got Fordo Boggett, the Herb Hoburg champion, and they've got a couple of surviving pale ones. So, this is kind of unfortunate, because I've got actually quite a significant army here of Malaya Drugina, and, of course, I also have Rincewind, the Allfather. But watch what happens here. Fordo Boggett's elite warriors are scripted to stay back, and they're also very slow, combat speed 5. So, the Theophorites are going to be the ones to actually take the brunt of the charge, and the Allfather jumps into the back where the Hobergs are. Um, we get a, a hilarious Sulphur Haze right here, which actually hits his own troops first. It doesn't really seem to do much damage to them, but it does poison the hell out of a couple of Theophorites. The Hobergs begin to advance. They advance through the Sulphur Haze. There is another one that we ran through, but then Rincewind lands in the middle of the Hobergs and immediately gets the shit kicked out of him. His prot is low, his defense skills, you can see he's been harassed down to negative 5 already, despite being a mounted unit who takes less harass penalties. And now the Hoburgs swarm around him, and he's taking attacks from a ton of models. 1, 2, 3, 4, 10, 16, uh, that's 5 in that square, I think, so 21, plus Fordobog at the Hoburg champion. He's taking a lot of attacks very quickly, and he can't handle it. So the Maladrazina charge into the sulfur, the other sulfur haze. They rapidly begin slaughtering the enemy, but Rincewind is just taking incredible quantities of damage. And in a couple of rounds, the Hobergs actually cut him down. So there he goes, he's dead. Now, the Maladrazina are fighting in the in the sulfur haze, which isn't great. A bunch of them have taken a lot of poison damage. They do, however, cut their way through the Hobergs, because the Hobergs aren't really all that dangerous. And so we chop our way through with casualties. But, uh, but we successfully drive them from the field. End result. We took Annika. We wiped out the vast majority of the enemy army. We did lose 8 of our 14 Malaya Drugina, as well as our Grid Drugina and our Stiag. And we lost Rincewind. So the Allfather is dead for now, unfortunately. Also, our Astropelagist retreated and died because he stupidly retreated into enemy territory instead of either of the provinces he could have retreated into. But in any case, we did hold the province, and we still have... You know, we still have a fairly healthy cavalry force. Six Malaya Drugina, nothing to sneeze at. Absolutely capable of taking out this enemy army, say. And this enemy army cannot reach because this is a mountain pass, which they can't cross. So, uh, the plan is in motion. My troops are moving into Province 17 here. I've got seven cavalry and then 11 cavalry down here. Now, a lot of them are Black Hoods. Um, so, you know, there is that. But they will still inflict damage. I'm actually going to take these Black Hoods out and tell them to fire. Uh, I guess I'll set them to hold an attack. So they'll fire for two rounds and then they'll charge, which is fine. These guys will just attack. Um, Kapsirko will be going in. Pafnuti will be staying in the back. And then he's got these five. Plus those guys. We'll, we'll call it all the survivors under Kapsirko next round. Um, we're building the Palisade here. We're going to claim this throne because I've been in negotiations with Ulm. Now, Ulm wants to come in and take territory from Erythia as well. My 
my perception is that I can take Erythia alone, especially because right now I've got uh, over 30 more units, the majority being Malaya Drugina, gathering to reinforce my attack. So they're going to go over here, we're going to get Yakim to control command them all, and he's going to go pretty much straight for the capital. Maybe a slight detour to take the Unknown Marshes, but we're going to be pushing up in here. So basically the deal I've cut with Ulm is here, take these two low-value provinces for free, and leave me alone. So he's going to take that one, I'm just ignoring that province. Uh, I am attacking this province, he may actually retreat his troops in an effort to get his, his King of Both Worlds out of there, but... While it says there are 20 units there, I know that can't be accurate. Or it's very unlikely to be accurate, because almost all of his Theophorites were killed. Um, all of his mercenaries were wiped out. They th That mercenary company actually disbanded uh, at the end of the turn. So I know he doesn't actually have 50 troops here. I'm pretty certain he doesn't. Um, especially because he's been recruiting soldiers of the Setting Sun for the last couple of turns pretty consistently. So that's what he's got. He's got this, this blob of soldiers of the Setting Sun, which are, like, tough-ish, but not incredibly tough. Not tough enough to, uh, to stop me by any means. My biggest problem actually is going to be Siege Chaff. I'm going to have to transition to recruiting a lot of Siege Chaff, and in fact, I think it's probably time to do that now. So we're going to start pumping out uh, Voy Archers back here. I actually have a lot of resources left, and rig these archers. They also have morale 8, so that's not a big benefit. They have slightly more precision. So we're gonna recruit some- we're gonna mix some of them in. I know I get slightly fewer of them, but still, having them- they have some armor. Um, they have a little bit more, uh, melee combat ability, very slightly. They do slightly more damage. Um, and their precision is a little bit higher, so they hit slightly more accurately. So yeah, I'm going to start recruiting a mix of archers there, and those archers will provide some some siege chaff for me. Once this palisade is done, I'm going to, and I'm also going to be fording Annika, of course. Once the palisades there are done, we will be uh, reinforcing from them as well. Now, I also have four mages moving up with Yakim, who are scripted to summon lesser air elementals. They have three air gems each right now. I'm actually going to give them five just because I don't think three is quite enough to maintain combat operations for more than one short battle. So we've got 20 air gems moving north with those guys, and they're just scripted to summon lesser air elementals right out of the gate. Lesser air elementals will do a pretty decent job against infantry. They will they will be slaughtered by the soldiers of the setting sun. Um, they will inflict damage at the same time, but since the soldiers of the setting sun have magical weapons, the pearl blades, they will be able to kill the air elementals very effectively. Regular troops will have trouble with it, and they will be being trampled the whole time as well. So, against them, against Theophorites and Hoplites, lesser air elementals will be very useful. But, um, I there was a little bit of diplomatic brinkmanship between me and Ulm. Uh, he wanted 34 as well, and my perception here is just that, well, I can actually beat Arithia by myself. So... I don't think there's any reason to give him 34. That said, the agreement we came to was like, okay, if I do suffer major reverses, then Ulm is free to come in and kind of clean up some of these provinces, which means that I have to be very careful about how I launch my attacks. I'm certainly going to take all the provinces surrounding before I actually attempt to assault Erythia. I'm going to have to be very careful of traps laid with his uh, big mages, where he will try to, he'll try to catch my cavalry in like, you know, sulfur mist traps and kill them um which he can likely i mean a lot of these guys can cast sulfur mist um 33 of them are air there and then another 25 percent have air one the fire air cross bath is pretty much all he needs because he can communion them so you know uh 33 25 uh you know over 50 percent of these guys have at least air one and then uh the princesses, the princesses of the Setting Sun, likewise, but they don't have the Astral nearly as reliably. Only about 50% of them have Astral 1 or 2. So, you know, there's that. He's recruiting mainly Dadukos. Dadukos are, some of them can also Sulfur Fog. Um, a fairly significant fraction of them, 50 plus another 20%. So 70% of them can do it potentially with support. Um, Dadukos are very good mages. I mean, 180 gold for four paths with a research bonus. So they're relatively they're almost efficient researchers pretty nice pretty solid they're good mages um but i don't think i don't think that can save them i think i'm hitting them too early 
for their combat magic to be of a huge, huge help. At least that's my goal. Obviously, in order to get Sulfur Mist, or Sulfur, is it called Sulfur Fog? Sulfur Haze, I'm sorry. Obviously, in order to get Sulfur Haze, they, they like I did, grabbed at least Evocation 2. They may have gone further down. Um, if they want to stop me, what they probably actually need is Alteration, is Earth Meld. Earth Meld could be a pretty decent counter to my, my Cavalry Charges, in that it can lock my Cavalry down and prevent them from getting the charge in the first place. But I still don't think that's going to be quite enough. I think I'm going to be able to pretty much overrun their territory, and then I'm going to need to put their, their capital under siege. Um, that will probably drag on for several turns, with me being unable to really assault. But I'll, I'll just see what I can do. In the meantime, I am claiming this throne. It's the throne of war. So I get attack skill and morale, which is a great little, little additional buff for my blessed troops. Now, of course, I don't actually have any blessed troops, but I mean, it helps Kapsierko. Kapsierko can bless himself. That'll give him extra attack skill and morale. He doesn't really need morale, but still, it's nice. And uh, his heroic prowess is, is still still chugging along with him. If we look at the Hall of Fame, the Hall of Fame has expanded some. It's still, like, largely mercenaries, but we've now got most of the prophets in there. Um, and some of them actually have quite a lot of kills. Ash Ketchum has quite a few kills. Um, my prophet is not on here because my prophet is a weenie, and uh, he doesn't have many kills. Posvidst over here has... Actually, he does have 27 kills. But only 37 experience, so that's interesting. He hasn't been leading as many battles as some of the other Prophets, I guess. In any case, uh, solid turn. I'm sorry that I lost Windswind, but in order to get him back, I'm just starting to recruit E-Parks. I'll want some Holy Threes anyway, and what this means is I'll be able to... I'm effectively generating 4.5 uh, Holy Points every turn, so I'll get him back in a few turns, because, you know, this turn I'll have... Next turn I'll have 3, the turn after that I'll have 9, so for a total of 12... Turn after that, I'll have 15 for a total of... Uh, I'm sorry, I'll have 12 for a total of uh, 24. And then I'll have 6 more, so... Uh, anyway, you see, it'll stack up very quickly. I'll have him back in, like, 6 turns. I'll have him back by turn 20 or 21, something like that. Just by pumping out the E-Parks. And then I'll have Holy Threes to wander around. It will slow down my mage recruitment, so that's kind of a bummer. But it's worth doing. Um, just to get him back. He's a powerful mage himself, albeit this is actually decent timing for him to die, because his combat use is pretty much run out. Um, especially when he's out of his own dominion, he's just not very tough. And I don't need him as a defensive super combatant yet. So, I don't have any gear for him, I don't have any construction to build gear for him yet. So, bringing him back in, you know, five, six, maybe seven turns, that'll be fine. I'll use him to do some sight searching, and then I will, uh... Some more sight searching, rather, because you know he sight searches pretty well. And then I'll I'll gear him up a little bit for use as a defensive super combatant and to cast uh, rituals. So in any case, that's turn fourteen. And I'll oh also, Capsirco uh, was attacked by a dog, and he killed it. Poor Popo. And one of my astropologists foresaw a great disaster and stopped it, which is sweet. And in Attica, we got ten extra water gems, which is also kind of nice. I do have one water gem per turn. Uh, from, I forget what that's actually coming from. Oh, from the Plague Water Stream. So I have a tiny little bit of water income, but it's, I mean, I don't have any water mages. My national water summons are pretty hard to get to, so we'll see how it goes. I don't imagine that I'm ever going to really do a whole lot with water, but hopefully I'll break into it a little bit towards the end of the game. Especially after I take Arithia, which will uh, give me an extra water gem income per month. And it's possible he's even sight searched some of these provinces for water, so that would be nice. But in any case, thanks for watching. I'll see y'all in turn 15.